complete. You need to market the products.
and the peace of the Lord be with you, the response is, and also with you. Let's go again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your blessings which overflow like a mighty sea in our lives. We confess, Lord, that many times we take all your blessings for granted and we ask that you forgive us. But even now, Lord, as we are coming to your house, gathered in your name for the thanksgiving service of the life of your son, Clifton Hatchery. We ask that you guide this our act of thanksgiving that it will bring honor and glory to you. We ask too, Lord, that you continue to comfort all who grieve and mourn. Uphold them with your strength. Give them the assurance of your presence. And help us to remember that in all things, you work for the good of those who love you. Thank you for your presence here with us, Lord. Guide us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some of us are not, are not so relaxed because they are in an unfamiliar place, but maybe we can relax the setting if we sing a familiar chorus. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Hold on, hold on a second, musician. Everybody know that? Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret before we start. So everybody in this church and everybody in other churches that are associated with me, right, Mrs. Green, no cell rev can seem to save his life. <laughs> so together, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice. This is, this is the day. Of the clergy, 
my own priest, Reverend Mark Jones, Dean of Manchester, organists, members of the choir, cast down, mourning, grieving members of the Greens family. My wife, Avril, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. I have a, a concern, and I have two concerns. One, can you see me? No. Three minutes for this tribute, but I thought I was allotted three years and ten. So I'm asking you to bear with me this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, St. Paul reminds us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes. Romans 6, 23. Death, my brothers and sisters, is the destiny of every living soul. And every living soul should consider this statement and ponder them in their hearts. Death reminds us of the brevity of life, this earthly life, and that we only have a certain amount of time to live. Therefore, we should live sincerely. We should live righteously and lovingly. All flesh is flesh, and all glory of man as a flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fail the way. The man, Clifton Green, put his religion in, in practice by loving and taking care of his parents, his wife and children, and was never too busy to lend the helping hand to the needy, the helpless, and the destitute. He understood clearly what it meant to be poor, what it meant to be hungry and distressed from those he interacted with from time to time. He was jack of all trade, and many household will testify to this. And my own household was a beneficiary. God bless you, sir, for those who he interacted with from time to time. Clifton was a quiet, unassuming, quick-headed, and human being who never worried up too much about amassing earthly possessions. But he cared very much 
forward the God of love and hope alerted to him. You never heard him in any freaker or boisterous behavior contrary to the law of the land. And as was taught by his late parents of blessed memory, Ivan and Vera Green, the love of his heart, he had a very special love and respect beyond the measure for his brother Maxwell. Those of you who might not know who Maxwell is, Maxwell is known by us as, you know him? As, as Robert. Maxwell is known as Robert. <clears throat> Clifton lived respectably and he died respectfully. Ladies and gentlemen, here lies the remains of a man who believed implicitly in this is next to godliness. This human, humble, respected, courteous man with a mannerism second to none as he exhibited quite quality of all to embrace. This morning to emulate and he left as a legacy to especially the new generation of today. This brother and friend was a stickler for cleanliness. His antique yellow Volkswagen motor car say yes sir, a true yata. <laughs> Every inch within the portals of his premises was always immaculately kept, supported by his well manicured hibiscus fence around his house. Clifton Green never Clifton Green never forget kind deeds, great or small. That meted out to him. I recall in 1987, I made him a sacrificial promise to him, which I with pleasure settled three years later. Since then, my brothers and sisters, I became father dear with the name he called me up to the time of his death, when God called him home to rest. My ever grateful son was not a fanatic Christian, but he had a personal relationship with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This deserves a, a resounding hallelujah, amen. And I'm going to say that again. Clifton had a personal relationship with his Lord and Savior. Will you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Will you say amen? Amen. Thank you. He was a member of our church in Paul in Spalding. He attended the church for his birth throughout his life. 
at church on a Sunday morning when he had things. He would brush his guitar and some with the lips glass of Lloyd Miller. When I get there, when I get there, oh, I will see you now. When I get there, I know I will see you now. Christian fortitude took him through life without complaining and worry. But he was leaning throughout his life on Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, in his own little corner, our brother and friend leaves behind a legacy of invaluable repute and undaunted integrity. My brothers and sisters, Clifton, Clifton, rest in peace. Rest in peace, our brother. Here lies the mountain remains of a brother who cries whose life was irritated with the starlight of love, humility, compassion, faithfulness, friendship, godliness, gentleness, perfect mannerism, love, peace. My brother, rest in the river of peace. Mr. and Mrs. Green, I encourage you to keep looking up and to remind you that God is still on his throne. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Family, members of St. Paul's congregation, ladies and gentlemen, friends, neighbors, a wonderful day to you all. It's a sad day, but it is also a wonderful day. God has made this day special for us. What has been said previous to me, you can believe every word. I have known Clifton Girl from 1982. Now, in order not to repeat everything that has come, there is 40 odd years of friendship, of solid friendship into less than a minute. If I took the time to tell you all that has been said and done in my presence by Clifton, it would probably take a year or more. Clifton was a wonderful character. What is a friend? I took the, I thought I knew what a friend was, but I took the time to look it up. He said that a friend is someone who is warm, approachable, and easy to relate to in character. It went on to state that friends must be constant to each other at all times, sincere and actuated by a good principle. They are prudent, generous, and cordial. Christ is a friend that loves us all time, and we must so love him as well as each other. In Proverbs 18 verse 24 from the King James Version, a man that has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. A friend must in a special manner be careful and tender to one another in affliction. A friend that loves at all times is a brother in adversity and is so to be valued. I met Clifton in 1982 when I came to Spalding. 
Although he has passed away, that friendship is still alive today. Back in 1982, I became a and Obviously, he became a Cliffy. <laughs> Mass Cliff is a very likable person, a straightforward man, a friendly person, someone you can talk to who doesn't judge you. He is also a man of many traits, and he was master of all of these traits. Those of us who know Clifton well know what that means. You have a situation and you say, boy, oh, Clifton, I don't know how to fix this in. Yeah. Ah, now you hear what I mean. He was a master of all of these things. He's also like a brother to me. We live like brothers. No matter where I was in Jamaica, he would take the time to call and visit. You just see the yellow BW come at your gate or your workplace. Go oh, go and ask for the long to see you. That was Clifton. In Proverbs 27, 9, ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Clifton was not only approachable, but a man of helpfulness. He was ever willing and able to offer his advice and assistance in a most meaningful way. He only wanted to know that there is a problem and he will come up with a viable solution. And his solutions were really solutions. Proverbs 27, verse 17, it says that iron is sharp with iron, so a man sharp with the countenance of his friend. During my long period of illness, Clifton was there to encourage and uplift with his ready wit and buoyancy. And I repeat, Clifton was a friend and a brother. And even though his short life is terminated here on earth, his friendship will always remain with me and all of us who know him. I won't say anything more because... Uh, thank you very much. to greet Reverend Jones and the clergy and everybody in Jesus' name. My name is Carly Green, I'm the eldest daughter of my dad, Clifton Green. I've lived away for many years and I've not seen a lot of you for a while, but I'm especially grateful for the wonderful turnout here today. Just for the celebration of the life and the memories of Anne unquestionably unique and loving man. That was very unique. We're honored to share with you some of the precious memories with dad as a father and also him as a person, the person that we knew growing up. To you, he may be Clifton, Mr. Green, Mas Clifton, or even by his nickname. What is his nickname? Leprechaun. We don't know what it means. <laughs> but to us, he was simply and lovingly daddy. Daddy was the quintessential dad, like the Cosby daddy before there was a Cosby show. He would sit with us, check if we did our homework, and go through the dreaded school reports. Daddy was very big on us getting a good education. And I personally remember him saying to me, Strive to be the best in your class. It doesn't matter what the color of the skin of anybody else is around you. Strive, go, and do great things. Go. It was just the way he said go, you know? Like he was giving me a commission. And I often left those motivational talks with him with tears running down my face, heaps of love in my heart, and a determination to do my dad's proud. Dad's voice. Dad had the softest, kindest voice, something I didn't fully appreciate until after he had passed, actually. I would lay awake sometimes at night and I would just hear him calling, Heather, 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 just by my pet name. And all he could be, obviously, he could be 
stern he wanted to be, but his baseline vocal renaissance was very gentle. We appreciate this because, you know, you heard some people very, very stern or their baseline voice is very hard, but that was very soft-spoken. One of the fondest memories of, is of him playing his guitar and singing songs like, I'm gonna lay down on Berlin, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Because he would not let us buy him a new one. 
But it is no doubt that car is a staple part of the family and well loved like a vintage car should be. No doubt the yellow bug is here today to serve her dad one last time in leading the procession from the funeral home to here and again from here to the burial ground at St. Paul's Anglican Church. There's a lesson to learn in all of this. And the lesson is, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Be your authentic self. That was unique. And you had unique tastes. Be yourself. You can't be like everybody else. Just ask God, are you happy with me? Regardless of what anyone else thinks of you, make sure you are yourself because everybody else is taken. Finally, I just want to thank the many angels who helped Dad when he was unwell, whether at home or just taking him to his appointments. Lance and some of the people who took that. Alton, I can't flex, I felt so many. Angela, well, Angela's family. Angela's family. Right? So, yeah, I just want to thank you for everything that you've done. We, we honor also our mom, Janet Green, for her strength, her tenacity, and for never ceasing to pray for daddy. Thank you, family and brethren for all the support you poured in, especially when we could not be here or we could not be there. You all know who you are and we're eternally grateful. To the family I say, Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Dad is not in pain anymore. He has gone to sleep. He served his purpose in making sure us children had a good upbringing and for that we are grateful. To so our mom, Janet Green, again, we ask you, mommy, to remember, especially the earlier years, and the words of one of dad's favorite songs. And remember, we're going to say this to you as if we're coming from him, okay? Dad used to love the song, Roses are red, my love, and violets are blue. Sugar is sweet, my love. But not as sweet as you. Oh. Dad, you fought hard and you were very strong. And you don't need to be strong anymore. We love you and may your wonderful soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Amen.
He and his crew would find their way down to a place called Freetown in Manchester. They traveled on foot through Hibernia, Mildbury, up to Green Hill, and then down to Medina. Where were they going? What were they looking for? You may say it's a long journey, and in fact it, it is. But it was not for Ira, he had, a, he had a purpose. He had eyes on a young, polite, and elegant damsel named Vera Roach. And he snatched her from under the watchful eyes of his father, Corporal Daniel Roach. Ira found a job for Vera and encouraged her to relocate the spoilings. This she did as she started to work with the Adams family. And on January 24th, 1947, they welcomed their first child, Clifton, into their lives. He attended the Spalling Primary School and being the first of five children meant that he became a natural leader. Life was very difficult for him and his siblings. He had numerous tasks on the farm, including tending goats, cows, pigs, and a mule being hurry. He had to carry water from the river or spring, carry on sticks, stack green banana for sale and riches, and on a Saturday morning before day, they had to guide the mule to Christiana with the market load which was sold by mom at this Christiana market. She did this for 26 long years. Despite all the extremely difficult tasks, mother insisted that her children should be in school every day. And when Clifton became captain and opening bowler of the cricket team at Spalding's primary, his teammates would join him on the farm, sometimes very early in the morning, because dad insisted that the work had to be done before he could leave for a match. He excelled academically and was able to pass his first, second, and third year local examinations. When he graduated from primary school, he landed his first job at the Public Works Department in Spalding in 1969. He bought himself a spanky new bicycle and a Honda 50 bike soon after. There are many stories with those bicycles and bikes. I don't know if you want to hear us. <laughs> After a relatively short stint at the Public Works Department, he was fortunate to gain employment at the Delta Boxside Company at Kirkvine in Manchester. This was in 1972. At the plant, he worked as a millwright. He was no stranger to hard work. He benefited significantly from the in-house training courses, which over time allowed him to improve his competency profile and, general, and his general position among co-workers at the plant. In 1974, he bought his first VW car. A car that became iconic with him and his family. There are many, many anecdotes about him and that car. Those who criticized him for coasting from Wallerston to Wendell for the mornings. Sat there in the evening when he was coming from work. And he would often say to me, let them talk. I woke me up to my family. 
Then there is the mystery of a broken windshield. We got the windshield that was broken and we heard that it was a foal, a cock that flew into the windshield and broke it. He would say to me, not all truth shall be known, or else there will be no peace. I could tell you about the windshield this morning. You want to hear? Pastor yes. does not allow for that in church. In 1983, he enrolled in an on the job training program, which he successfully completed and was awarded a diploma in mechanical engineering. He used his newly acquired competences and confidence to take and solve several challenges around the house as well as in helping others in his daily life. When his, his full-time tenure came to a close, he worked part-time for several years until operations were transferred to St. Catherine. Whilst at Windalco, Clifton lived a busy and a meaningful life. In March 1976, I remember that day, he married the love of his life, Janet Green, and remained married until death to one wife. That union produced one male child. I'll ask the children to stand as I go. One male child, beginning with Morris. Well, if Morris stood, we would all run out of here. <laughs> he died last year, November. <laughs> Morris will not stand, but his spirit will stand with us this morning. <laughs> then there are the females. Carlene. Latoya. And Camille. Then there is Avenel. Carvel, where's Jimmy? I know he's here somewhere. And Alric. There's Alric at the back, guarding his dad's body. It was whilst at Windalco that Clifton's life changed significantly. He was able to acquire a comfortable home in Spalding, feed his family, and educate all of his children. He enjoyed taking his family to the beach, and of course he wouldn't leave his guitar, which was a trade-off for the banjo. This was a source of entertainment, and he would sing and play traditional folk, gospel, and reggae music. The occasion became more festive where there was corn or jerk pork. It's just a pity that I never got to taste any of that. <laughs> He could be described as having green thumbs, his corn stalks, gunga tree, ginger, his red and white roses, just anything that he touched would just flourish. I heard the name Leprechaun mentioned, and I did not wish to mention that name in church. <laughs> but let me tell you about dentists. <laughs> He earned the name Dentist based on a side job he picked up. With wheels, the BW, confidence, and some rud rudimentary mechanical skills, he started extracting teeth at weekend at some rural places. Well, after a few successes, he struggled with a molar tooth which broke and part was left embedded in the gum. He had no proper tools or anesthesia, so he packed up and left, hoping to go back the next week to take care of it. The following week, as he, as he made his way, a young man came out of the bushes and waved at him practically as a dentist. Look on the further, look on down there, they have plan to beat you. <laughs> A word of warning was enough. He had the BW make haste out of the village. 
And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, each time he tells me that story, it adds a little bit more. But time will not allow for you to hear all of it. In November 2019, he was rudely awakened by an arm that just broke. He broke his arm. He also lost mobility in one of his feet and was hospitalized at the Mandela Hospital. Now when I asked his daughter which arm and which foot was broken, she said she, she did not have the details. But let me tell you, it was difficult for me because as big as I was at the time, I could not pick him up in the hospital and his feet just buckled underneath him. And so it is visible in my mind that for him to have come back from those injuries and that bout of sickness at a time when he was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, cancer of the bones, it is nothing but God's miracle. His brother, Dennis, coincidentally, was also hospitalized in Miami with lymphoma. He died. But Clifton came roaring back to life, regaining strength and mobility in hand and feet. He and the DW were back in business, and Herbie took a new look, destined for new, new times and things. He started receiving treatment at the Kingston Public Hospital and spent long, painful hours between there and the Mandela Hospital, as well as the clinic. He was hoping for relief and a remedy from the clutches of cancer. On October 5, 2023, he reluctantly made his final sojourn to KPH. He did not return that day. By the following morning, the doctors called his family, only this time not to take any clothes or anything, just priors. Clifton needed those garments no more because his new robe of pure white signaled a new destination. He survived by his wife of 47 years. His seven children, nine grandchildren, two sisters, and one little brother left. <laughs> Nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. The Book of Wisdom speaks about the destiny of the righteous. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 3 and 9. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. Those who trust in Him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with Him in love, because grace and mercy are upon His elect and he watches over the Holy Ones. And just before I conclude, may I thank those who have added to his life, especially during these final years. One would say it's the duty of a wife, but we all know that not all wives do what some wives do. And Janet was there for Clifton. And Angela was there for Clifton. And there are all the caregivers who are there for him. Thank you on behalf of the family. Lord, receive it, thy servant Clifton, we pray. You are physically absent, but your precious memories will live on. May light perpetually shine upon you. Amen. I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. 
to them. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise into perfection in the company of the saints. I bless the body of our brother Clifton with holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we are buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him, by likeness to his death, so shall we be reunited with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Clifton was incorporated into Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us continue in prayer. O oh God, Jesus Christ, destroy death and brought life and immortality to life. Grant that your servant, Clifton Patrick, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and forever. Amen. By the congregation to sit for the ministry of the word. Because Jesus never turned to him and said, Sorry, friend, you never got baptized. Sorry, friend, you never cleaned the temple when you were supposed to clean it. Sorry, friend, you didn't put your hand in the. They never call it till. There's a special um, Hebrew word that I have it in my mind, I just can't remember it. But, the collection plate. I don't remember what they have. There's a word for it, but don't worry yourself. You never, you never say you put your hand in the collection plate and never put it back. You did wrong in the temple. He never said that. He said, today, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the message for us all. Yes, we all have a past. Every Christian is Christ destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life. Grant that your servant Clifton Patrick, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and forever. Amen. By the congregation to sit for the ministry of the world. Ecclesiastic chapter 3, verse 1. 
For everything, there is a season, and a time for every matter under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stone, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sue. A time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We won't, do, we won't read the second reading. We will sing the second scripture. We will sing Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd, to the tune, The Happy Wanderer.
Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. as you remember a loved one who has passed. And when you come to church and the pastor and the preacher will tell you there is joy because we are having a service of thanksgiving. But truth be told, family and friends are crying. Friends, even Jesus, cried at the death of his friend Lazarus. There is nothing wrong with crying. It is our hope to remind us that we take comfort in Jesus Christ, who is indeed our hope. 
it was indeed our brother Clifton's hope, his belief, his life. Death is to us here on this side of eternity a thing that people believe is final. And to some extent it is true. But for us as Christians, we acknowledge that there is always hope in King Jesus. You know, many persons in my congregation will hear me say over and over as I try to console. Some of the family members have come from overseas. And in a few short days they are going to go again. And we were medical sad because they're going again. But there's always that hope that one day we see them again. And they're going to make packs, you know. And we say, let it not be a death the next time we gather. Let it be a Christmas or some celebratory. So although there is the sadness when they are going away, there is the hope that we're going to see each other again and there will be joy. I put it to you all this morning that death, especially for us as Christians, is exactly like that. Today we come together to say goodbye because our brother has gone on to be with our Lord ahead of us. We are still on the journey of life. But for all believers, there is that hope that one day, one day, we will see him again when we join him and all the saints in the company of heaven. Amen? Amen. Our first Old Testament reading reminded us that there is a time and season for everything. A time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to... A time to buy the Volkswagen car and then a time to name it. Yes. Unlike many of you, I met Clifton only in the last couple of years. For I'm, I am, as I said, green as grass, the new kid on the block. But he was here, we talk about a stickler for cleanliness and a stickler for order, that is how I knew him as. But most importantly, a person that loved life. I remember his brother calling me and said, Rev, Christ are not well enough, pray for him. And I would pray for him, especially in my morning devotions. And then I would get up to go to do something on the road, and he's a yellow bug that passed me. I said, oh, I'm supposed to be sick. But that was who he was. Yes, he was challenged. Challenges there are, and he had his fair share. But he gave credence to his God. You know, in our scripture passage this morning, Jesus is actually speaking to his disciples. Where in the latter part of the Gospel of John, the reading comes from when Jesus is actually preparing his disciples because he's on a journey for the final time. He's going to Jerusalem, and this is the final time. He will end up on a cross, on a Roman cross, outside the city walls. And as he prepares his disciples, he says, let your heart not be troubled. Most importantly, he says, believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house are many mansions, the, the King James Version says. We heard rooms. What? The imagery is the same. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us that where he is, 
we will also eventually be with him. This is the hope in which we as Christians live. We all who believe in him recognize and are comforted by the fact that we will be with our Lord one day and see all the saints who have gone on before us and be comforted. There's a time and place for everything. Time for blessings that overflow like a mighty sea in our lives. You know, unfortunately, we take our God for granted sometimes. We look outside, we see the little breeze, we see the rain clouds, and sometimes we face go down because we don't want it to rain. But if you are a farmer like Brother Green, your face go up because it means if it rain, the food and the blessings will flow. But we take our God for granted at times. <coughs> our brother Clifton, it is my experience, recognized and lived his life as if it were a testimony to all who knew him. The question I am asking this morning, Papa Saul, do we understand, do we recognize, and do we hear the testimony of Clifton Patrick as he lived his life? Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Scripture will tell us and remind us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We of ourselves can do nothing to make ourselves good enough. Jesus is comforting his disciples because he's going into Jerusalem to be eventually tried, put out of the Jerusalem walls and hung on a Roman cross to pay the penalty of your sin and mine even though he doesn't deserve it, or he lived a sinless life. But for us, he paid the price and calls his disciples to believe. Believe in God, believe also in me. And we know this. Many of us who have come up to primary school, high school, and on prayers every morning and evening at school, no, about God. The question is, do we know our God? Do we know our Savior in Jesus Christ? I happened to be in Kingston on Monday when the earth shook and buildings went left and right as they swayed and I heard screaming voices and I heard, in fact you all heard, those of you that were on listening to the radio station or watching it, you heard a certain radio commenta commentary say, oh God! <laughs> Why is it that we are, when we are challenged by the unknown, we remember to cry out to our Savior and our Creator and our King? We fall down on the ground and we probably even sing, Closer, closer, God to me. Don't worry, I can't sing, but I know some of the words. I make a joyful noise when it's time. When we are in distress, oh God! When we don't know what's happening next, oh God! And yet still, when the good times come around, we totally forget where our blessings are coming from. The little that I know 
of our brother, he always remembered where his blessing flowed from. I would see him every Sunday in church when I went to his church. I didn't go to his church all the time. But I would hear. And we would need to strategize about the work of the church. And he was also of the opinion, like I am and many of us are, that we are called to work in the vineyard, yes, to share the good news with others. But it is not about our work. There is no work that we can do that makes us good enough for heaven. We are called to believe in Jesus Christ, just as he did. This is his testimony. We are called to believe in Jesus Christ. Because for the believers, salvation is a certainty. Brother Clifton lived a life that many persons know him and know of him. He, I want to use the word, experimented with certain conditions. He loved his car, and we heard that he started with a green. BW and it went to a yellow bug and then a yellow Herbie and then Herbie got racing stripes but don't let that fool you he wasn't in the world and of the world and for the world he enjoyed life but he knew his God how many of us here know our God John 3, 16, another of his favorite scriptures. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, that whoever, that whoever shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I am certain like me, when we invite some of our friends to come and hear, talk about scripture, get involved in a Bible study, maybe come to church with me now and, now, now and listen, to, listen to what the preacher has to say, our friends respond and push back, and I'm sure he had friends like that. You know, I need to, I come in, but I need to fix up something in my life first and then come. I need to straighten up some things over here before I join you in church. In fact, I'm, I'm trusting that many of us, as we invite our own friends, hear some of that. Oh, oh, how little they are listening to the testimony of those who remind us daily, believe in God. That is what salvation is about. I like to tell this story. One of my favorite passages in scripture is about when Jesus was eventually placed on the Roman cross, dying for the sins of humanity. There was a criminal beside him and that criminal decided to mock him. Chuck, if you really like God, come down. And in fact, when you come down, take me down too. My words, but that's essentially what's going on. Yet there was another criminal on the other side that stopped him and said, Friend, you and I deserve what we are getting, but he doesn't. Listen to me. Criminals know them one another. Criminals know them one another. This is true. Even in today. So he says, Have some respect. The man telling the story in my words. And then he turns to Jesus. And Jesus, he says, to Jesus, he says, Lord, 
Remember me when you go into paradise. Now this is the part I love. Christian is sitting down here. Who said I'm a Christian? Have a past. When people outside say, a pure hypocrite in the church. We all have a past. Thank God we have gotten his forgiveness and we embrace the forgiveness of God daily. And even when we trip and fall down again, we have the opportunity to come back to our Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, having the full understanding that salvation is ours, forgiveness is ours, and a room, a mansion is being prepared for each and every one of us. So long, as we, scripture says, so long as we believe, so long as we stay on the path of righteousness. I put it to you, friends, in his own way, Brother Clifton Patrick lived a life that his testimony would have invited us all. And he said it with words, so don't get me wrong. I know some people will never have the opportunity to come and speak in front of a mic or when you're coming up your knees buckle like mine used to do and it still does. And you know, I can't do that, Rev, I can't do that. But in our conversation, in the life we live, and many times people are looking at us and don't know, we don't know that they're looking. They want to see how we respond when adversity comes. And they just look. And maybe, just maybe, someone will come and pinch us or pull us or sleeve and say, I want what you have. And it's not the physical have, they want the Jesus that we have. Friends, Salvation is for all, if only we believe. This was our brother, our brother's testimony. This was our brother's life's testimony, and he lived it. You don't have to be a priest or a pastor, just an ordinary person. Pastor will tell you, it is the ordinary person that will go to places that pastor can go. The ordinary person who tells their testimony in specific situations that we are not even privy to. But we speak truth to all who will hear. We allow the Holy Spirit to do its work if only we share those good testimonies, that good news of our Lord. For He calls us he calls us first to believe, accept, for he has already done the work for our salvation. And I know somebody will put up their hand, but Rev, we're supposed to do some work. Yes. Having experienced that great love and joy of salvation, we not keep it to myself or we're properly talk. We're so happy we share it. That's what he's calling us to do, you know. Not work, 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 but to share the good news. Now in sharing, I may have to go over there and speak, but that's not work. That's joy. Joy for all Christians working in God's vineyard to share his good news with others. Life is not always easy. But let us not close our eyes to the blessings of our God. He pours out his blessings like a mighty sea in our hearts. Our cup overflows. Psalm 23 tells us, our cup overflows with God's blessings. Let us, on this day, when yes, some of us are sad and there may be some tears, let us remember in thanksgiving the life of our brother, God's created son, placed on earth to live and walk with us at a time like this, until we too <coughs> get to the point where we step from this side of eternity to the next, when we will be once again with him 
and with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the company of the saints. Let us recognize our blessings. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your son Jesus Christ our Lord give to the whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace may all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life and may we with him pass to the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your love and care, that, casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Console Clifton's family in their grief. Surround them with your love and strengthen them with the grace and peace of your presence. Hear us, Lord. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Clifton and for all those whom we, we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. For the collection, I am dying, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me.
one is Michael Thomas, and we thank him for a very short notice stepping in the breach. There's a time and season for everything, right, Brother Michael? Amen. He will do a rendition on more water sunrise. After the rendition, we'll have the final commendation, and then we will have the recessional leave. I'm inviting you, the Paul Bearers, during the second verse of the recessional hymn, to come forward as we prepare to take the casket. Now the casket will be placed in the hearse as we will journey to St. Paul in Spalding, to put it in its final resting place. I'm going to ask you to allow the hearse and the members of the funeral party to go first and then everyone follow you. Not to worry, there will be at least one out right and pass through to the directors outside. There's no scrambling, we will wait on you. Relax. Alright? Coming. <coughs> Having said that then, let us proceed. We invite Brother Michael to do a rendition on Oh Water Sunrise prior to Final combination. Brother Michael. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Mr. Green, the guitar man. So there must be a guitar in the house. Thank you. 
discover.
many of you want to know him tonight? This song is what it's all about. I want to know you so well. Nothing can make me doubt you. from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies who is in dwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ henceforth, says the spirit. They may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. As we heard this morning in the tributes, a man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of death, there is life. In the midst of life, there is also death. To whom shall we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we recommend to Almighty God, our brother, and we commit his body to its final best resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and die in your favor. And when your beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Clifton, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. 
grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, if there are any flowers or roses to go inside, now is the time to put it. Nothing is going inside, okay, you can tell you. To the end of the liturgy. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege we have to carry everything to God in prayer. Now I have to depend on the choir and the liturgist and the canto. So after three, two, three. Wow.
to the only wise God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, is now and forever. Amen. Oh, my God. 